Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome you back. Uh, this is episode number five of Aaron's Art Tips. I'm Aaron Blaze, and I just want to thank you all, first of all, for making these such a successful kind of line of videos that I've been doing. I've been having a lot of fun kind of sharing the knowledge that I've gained over the years, and the response has been great. So I'm just going to keep them coming, and hopefully you guys can spread the word, and uh, let's build up an audience because I'm really enjoying this. Um, the next thing I'd like to do, I'd like to give a little shout out to my friend Matt Killian and his animation class. Uh, I know you guys are watching these and I really appreciate it. I've seen your films that you've been doing. I think they're absolutely brilliant. And I just wanted to say hi and thanks for watching. The other thing I'd like to say is, you know, all this stuff that you see me talking about, you can see find a lot of this stuff on my website. I have a lot of tutorials there. My website is called The Art of Aaron Blaze, and the URL is CreatureArtTeacher.com. That's CreatureArtTeacher.com. Go check it out. Check out some of the different galleries. I've got galleries for my wildlife art. I've got a gallery for my concept and creature design. I've got places to buy Photoshop tutorials. Um, I've got PDF downloads. I've, all, I've got all kinds of fun stuff on there. And you can see all of my um, uh, the Aaron's Art Tips under the Aaron's Art Tips section. So go check it out. Uh, so this week, what I want to talk about is finding the gesture, finding that flow, that rhythm, that line of action through a pose, through a composition, whatever it might be. Um, when you can find it, you'll find that your, your characters, your poses, your compositions will find more fluidity through them and they'll, they'll have some movement. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. The first thing I want to talk about is, is uh, handling the human figure. Now, I put together a couple little snippets and we'll show you that now. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you a drawing that I did just a little bit ago. Uh, I'm going to show it in time lapse because it's actually, it took me about five minutes to do. And that's all right, it's only a five minute drawing, so it's done very quickly. But I wanted to speed it up anyway so that I could have time for other uh, uh, images on, the, on this tutorial. So, once again, I want you to see how I find the gesture. This is the drawing here. How I find that gesture first and then I or that line of action and I build the the, the uh, figure on top of that so I'm going to go ahead and play this and you can see here I am finding that s curve that flow of the body and then I'm finding the the off of that gesture I can find you know the 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 tilt of the shoulders the tilt of the hips and build that figure on top of that gesture that I've found now granted there's a there you know I've been drawing figures for a long time and so you know, there's a lot of anatomy knowledge and that sort of thing. This all comes from uh, observation and building that visual library, that thing that I've talked about in some of my past tutorials. But here you can see how quickly, based on finding that gesture, that I can create this figure drawing. And then after everything is roughed in, then it's just a matter of going in and basically tying things down. And you can see now I can go in and, and hit some of the finer details and finish up the drawing of this figure. And because of that gesture, I've got nice flow. Um, there's nice weight happening because I'm, I'm, you look for you look for those flows. Look for the how the gesture, how the how how the rhythms move through a, a, a character or a body. And there you have it. And that's finding the gesture in the human figure. Okay, so now I want to show you one more. Let's uh, go ahead and get this to play. And here I'm finding that gesture, once again, finding the flow. I find that, that the dominant curve of the body and this female figure that I'm sketching. And then on top of that curve, I start building the anatomy, but I'm never losing that gesture. I want to make sure that everything sits and flows off of that gesture. It kind of defines that whole pose. Even the hair, I want the hair to flow and be part of that gesture. And then once I have it all roughed in, then it's just a matter of going in and tying down and hitting some of my details and adjusting some of the anatomy. And you can see by putting in that gesture first, it works as a framework. It works as, as that, that scaffolding that you can build everything on top of. And it'll, it'll always keep everything in line as long as you stay within that gesture. And you can see that now it's just a matter of just uh, finishing up. I throw a little shadow in there. And you can see now that that gesture sticks, stays through even in the finished product. So the next thing I'd like to talk about, let's talk about animal characters. And here I've pulled up uh, some drawings from my How to Draw Elephants 
packet that you can find on my website if you'd like to download it. Um, and I'm going to pull over a few pages and I want to talk about how we find the flow, uh, how I found the gesture through them. And some of these actually show the progression of how I do that. So let me pull this first one over. Whoops. Let me pull this first one over right here and blow this up. And you can see in this series of drawings up on the upper left, you can see how I've very quickly, loosely drawn in that gesture, tried to find the flow, that kind of the wedge shape that I wanted to build on this drawing. And then from there, it was just a matter of building up the drawing. And you can see through this progression, that final product. Now I've got several pages of this, of, of how to build these up like this on my packet. Let me bring over another one. And this one I think is even uh, an even better example. Let me get rid of that. And, uh, and here you can see that sweeping circular gesture that I was trying to create, taking it right from the trunk, right down through the body and into the leg. And you can see how based on that, that initial gesture that I threw, it, threw down there, I could build the body on top of that. And ultimately in the end, you can see the finished product. Now these are fairly cartoony drawings. Let me uh, go into some realistic ones. These are once again, more elephant drawings. And the reason I like to use elephants as an example is they're because they're big, they're bulky, they're massive, they're, they're like big blocks. And people think, well, how can you find a gesture in that? Well, you can, they can be very gestural. Let me pull over a couple of these. Once again, let me turn that off. And here you can see that, you know, right through here, it starts in the leg and flows right up through the body. And I've got this nice curve, kind of gestural curve working through. Let me put a layer on here and I'm going to, I'm going to cover that up. Let me fill this in because I, I really want to show you guys this. I'm going to knock this down and, and watch. You can see that line of action just flows right through that body there. And here, here with the, the, this from uh, with this crocodile grabbing the, the elephant's trunk, I even carried it right through that crocodile and right into that. And then looking for these lines of action and then building everything on top of that. Notice how everything is just built right on these lines of action right through there. Here I've got right there and see how fluid these become. You can see these become uh, when you can build these lines of action through your drawings, through your posing, the posing then becomes much more fluid. Even though you pile on all these different details, at, if you keep those things in mind, those, those, those flows of action, it'll stay fluid. Now I want to talk about, so that's how you do it with, oh, let me pull over one more. Actually, I've got another one. Let me bring that over. And, uh. And it's basically the same thing, but I just want to, you know, this one's, this one is a, a bit more obvious because you can really see that flow through the, uh, the elephant's bodies. And, uh, let me bring this up a little bit. And once again, right through the body, right through the body, see that flow right there. Here I've got this fun kind of curve working through here. And you can see, look at this. I want to show you over here as I erase this. Look at how, and this is something I did on purpose because I wanted to uh, keep the integrity of that line of action. Look how it goes from the trunk right into this back line. Now watch the, 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 the line of the back, the spine flows right into that leg and then we flow out. I really wanted that to be part of the drawing so that I could add fluidity to it. And you know, obviously you can see right through this, it just flows right through. So find those lines of action in your posing. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit about, you know, I was talking earlier about putting that, the line of action, the gesture in your composition the entire image that you're creating. And I'm going to give you one example. And, and what you're trying to do, a good composition, I think, is going to get the eye to move through it. And that's what I try to do in my animal drawings and my paintings. There's a, a painting, that a, a digital painting that I recently did that I'm getting ready to, I'm using it as a comp 
uh, to create a large oil painting, which I haven't completed yet. Matter of fact, all I have is the blank canvas sitting on my easel right now. But I'm going to bring over the, uh, the image. And this is, uh, you know, as, as many of you know, I, I do a lot of walks on the beach. I live here in Florida. I love to go out at sunrise. There's so much to see, and it's a great way to start the day. And so from that, I like to do paintings. So this is one here that I created. Um, and this is going to be a large oil, like I said. Um, but this, I created this. I, everything in here is placed for a reason and on purpose. And I'm going to show you in just a second here. Let me put it like I did with the elephants. I'm going to put another layer on top. Let's fill this in, knock it down a little bit, and I'm going to start showing you. I want I wanted movement. Now, first of all, most of the people that are going to see this are from Western culture. And I'm, the reason I'm bringing up Western culture is because we tend to read from left to right, and I wanted to get some movement going. And so I knew the viewer would probably look on the left side and kind of move out. And so you'll see how when I created this wave, I'm going to draw through here and you'll see how some of these dominant lines, I want it to feed right into the birds. And I've got a dominant line here coming in, okay? Now everything is moving in this direction. Now I want to show you something else. Let me turn this off for a second. Now I've got these lines happening here okay now even the birds I've posed I've posed them purposely with the, the way their wings are flapping I did it purposely it's very subtle and some of you could say well I don't know if that's really going to be as effective as you say it is but I, I do it anyway and I want to show you what I'm talking about see this wing here well look it feeds right into this I wanted it to feed into that see the back of this bird it mimics this. So there's flow there. It fits. Everything fits together. And then on top of all that, these birds are all part of, as you follow, as your eye follows the line of this wave, it feeds right into the birds and right through. And we get this action, this action of these birds moving through the composition. And so that is the thinking that I put behind creating this piece. Now, it looks just natural but I've actually placed everything there for that reason and it falls into that finding the gesture finding the flow finding the line of action it works in compositions it works in your figures it works in character drawing it works in your photography if you want to pose characters it goes all across the entire artistic spectrum and so that's just something I wanted to share with you so that's Aaron's art tips number five Remember, you can go uh, check out more of my stuff at CreatureArtTeacher.com. That's the art of Aaron Blaze at CreatureArtTeacher.com. You'll find more information like this, tutorials on Photoshop, more of my paintings. I hope you enjoyed it. Look for that gesture. Look for the flow. Find the fluidity in your imaging. Uh, until next week, I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it, and I'll talk to you then. Bye.